Yeah, What's they, up, guys? Welcome to the first ever episode 232 of the Kind of Funny Games cast. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by one of the coolest dudes in video games, Greg Miller. Hi. Sir Greg Miller. Heard That's over me. the weekend you got I knighted. did get knighted. I did wow. get knighted, yeah. yeah. Right. Gary Wood himself. Exactly. Only, only the, you know, I'm part of the Legion of Gary, and he's just out there giving them out now, making mm-hmm. sure mm-hmm. that I, it's well known that I am a knight of the Legion of Gary. Huh. If you're not making moves. You're standing still. God damn, I love it. Yeah, nothing I love Gary. more than that. We got to get him on this show. I know, on really show. do. Yeah. Just to he's playing a bunch of weird ass games. So what yeah, we, we got to hear all all about him. Yeah, and of course, joining us once again, Fran Mirabella the third. You know him from Twitch.tv slash FM three underscore. Uh, no one's embarrassed by that at all, especially not, at all. not him. You can find him on Fran Fridays. <laughs> That's right. You can find him on other days too because he just you. streams, but they don't have alliteration going. Set on, your so. live notifications. Mm-hmm. FM three. Underscore yeah. moving to Mixer if you didn't hear one day <laughs> no, <I don't>. that <laughs> might happen. All the big streamers are going to Mixer. How That's much where money going. would you would they need to offer you to to move to Mixer? Not much. Hundred K. Just a little more than you pay me here, and I'll be good to go. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, guys. It's not going to take a lie. <laughs> I'm joking. That's That's that, never is, that is an interesting thing, though. Before we get into the whole ring world uh, of games cast, like, do you guys with with Ninja going to Mixer exclusively, if you didn't know, yeah. leaving Twitch? Very big deal. Like we've Huge seen it with some deal. some big Twitch streamers before, but like. This is the biggest one ever. What do you think the ramifications are going to be in the next year? I think more people will be watching on Mixer than ever before, right? That's that's for sure. That's guaranteed. I think you will have people then start wondering what the deal was and then how how much money is Mixer throwing around, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? What does a Dr. Disrespect look like? Uh, you know what I mean? is he He's not committed to th- these platforms, right? They're all just trying to use it to further their brand, get wherever. So I think if Mixer is serious about going after top-tier talent like that, then they're going to start having some very interesting conversations and making those moves. Yeah. I hope that it opens up the exclusivity deals. I hope that especially... There's, there's a, a future that I see where a lot of the, the lower end people, the us's of the world, that kind of funny game. get to stream wherever the fuck they want because they're going to be like, no one gives a shit. Because you know? if mean, you don't know Gamescast, if you were a listener, uh, for kind of funny games, but everybody, or not everybody, but we can speak to our own contract with Twitch, right? Uh, by being a partner on Twitch, we have an exclusivity agreement of we'll only stream there. It yeah. is very, very rare for any creator to be able to stream uh, if you're a partnered Twitch partner. Uh, you can't stream anywhere else. The exceptions are big websites like Rooster Teeth or IGN that have their own live streaming platforms that sure. have worked out. Right, because they have their deals. own site, and they also sell into the inventory sometimes and help take care of that stuff. But um, as far as I know, any big streamer uh, that doesn't have an IGN or Rooster Teeth or whatever can't do that. Yeah, you can't as a partner. That's just What's interesting is Twitch is in the pole position, right? So most of the big streamers are where? Twitch. Now, on YouTube, there's some very big personalities, but they're already big on YouTube. Um, but in other words, you do have to choose once you enter in that contract. So I, do, I, do, I don't know that many people who are allowed to, let's say you're a huge YouTuber. If you're a partner on Twitch, I think they still even ask you. Like, oh, yeah? You can't do both, no, which can't. is a crazy ass, right? If you're like a really big YouTuber and you come over and you're signing your contract, you're like, wait, what? Like, I'm on YouTube, like, you want me to do, but like, one or the other, like, yeah, if you want to be a partner and make money. Yeah, I hope that changes. But I, I to, to Twitch's credit, though, like, they do have a lot of features and things like Twitch Prime that are game changers that, that, that add so much value to uh, the users and to the creators, where it's, why would people want to leave Twitch? Twitch Prime in particular. Twitch Prime, it changes the game, where it's like, it's essentially free money. Like, it's money that you're already spending if you are have Amazon Prime, yeah. which then you can then just use it on a Twitch sub, which is very different than like a Mixer. Not to yeah. mention the exclusive game goods and game codes you'll get and stuff like that. Mixer does shit like that, though. Like, I don't think that that's really uh, If I was to like, sign up for Mixer Prime, would I get exclusive gear in the Division 2? I don't think so. Checkmate Twitch. Come on. <laughs> Checkmate. Checkmate Twitch. Yeah, that I was going to say, I did sure. quick math on, because I thought Ninja was in, what, the 80,000, 100,000 subs range a lot. Like, those are the, I believe, the top ends, which is just massive Insane. for subscribers. So, right, at Twitch Primes, If let's assume that most of them are Twitch Prime, and a lot of them are, like, because um, it's, frankly, kids using their parents' Twitch, Twitch Prime. That was, like, what, 2 or $3 million a year, depending on how it's sliced. So I was like, oh, they're at least paying them. I, I estimated, like, $5 million a year just to make up for the free money he's getting from mm-hmm. Twitch Prime. So I was like, one, they have to fund it. But now, you know, that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, is Microsoft and Xbox starting to think about maybe Games Pass? And what if you're Games Pass Plus and you get a free Mixer sub? Or yeah, I bet totally, you they're moving totally. in that direction. And that could be a really big game changer because, yeah, as a streamer, that'd be one thing. I'd be like, what incentive, like, how can you get people to help support me? 
um, other than them just like spending five bucks. And know? that's the biggest thing is like you figure as a, a, a regular streamer, an up and coming streamer, whatever you want to call any of us or something like that. It's the idea that cool ninja can go there and now he's got to bring his audience and they've got to start getting other people to look at it and stick around. Right. Because it doesn't make sense for anyone else to jump over there if they're just doing normal numbers like our numbers or whatever for the random stuff we do. And then it's like, OK, cool. Well, if there's not already a built in audience, they're watching it. You're not going to grow it the same way. Yeah. Yeah. yeah Interesting I, stuff. I was going to say, I watch. checked in today. Yeah. This morning when he announced he already had about 20, 25,000 followers, he's up to 100,000 followers. Uh, whatever. It's only it's been a, three or four hours. He hasn't. On Mixer, uh, just free a subscription or? Those are just followers. That's a follower like just on Twitch. Followers. Got it. Subscribers yeah, yeah, yeah. aren't exposed, um, but he yeah. hasn't even gone live yet. So he goes live tomorrow. So I'm very curious to see how that number converts because I think he has like, what is it? Six to, it's six million plus on, on Twitch. It might even be almost 10 or something. God. It's something insane, I think. I think it's over six, but I'll, I'll check why we. It'll be interesting to see how it pans out. Show. I mean, it's like, as we've talked about here, especially with the rumored guarantee he has for three years or whatever. At the end of three years, if it oh hasn't 14. gotten legs and nothing's happening, 14. who the fuck cares? Bounce back to Twitch and then it'll be this huge deal. Or in three years, whoever the biggest platform is. Yeah. 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 I mean, Almost 15 million followers. YouTube on gaming for all its faults and stuff, like with Stadia coming out, who knows with all this stuff. And they could offer a similar thing. You're talking about game yeah. pass offering free subscription. YouTube Red. New battle. Stadia, Stadia could also add yeah. some type of. I am thing. 50 followers away from 20,000 on Twitch. So I'm coming. I know there's 50 people listening right now. Everything Go. ninjas Follows leaving behind. Free. That's just that's just gobble it up. It's for the rest gobble of the crown up. is up Gary for grabs. I, will it Andy? be Doctor Disrespect? Will it be Fran? Will it be Gary? <laughs> Time will tell. Time it won't will be tell. Andy for sure. We but it him. won't tell on this show because this is the kindy fu- kind of funny kindy kindy <laughs> the kindy funny games cast uh, each and every week right here on YouTube.com/slash kind of funny games. We get together to talk about video games, all the things that we love about them, what we've been playing, all of that stuff. Uh, Patreon supporters at the silver membership or above get to watch the show live as we record it. And more importantly, they get the pre and post show. It's fantastic stuff. We have great conversations about Fran impressions, Fran doing his own impressions. We watch some old Kevin videos. His own impressions, kites being flown around him. It's really cool stuff. Um, but if you don't want to pay, that's cool. Like I said, youtube.com or roosterd.com, or you can listen to it on any podcast service you like. That's right. You can just search for kind of funny games cast on any podcast service and you'll find it there. You can like it. You can follow it. You can subscribe. You can thumbs it up. You can put your thumb in many different places. Wow. Um, gross. really gross. Yeah. Well, it's it doesn't fun. need to be gross. It's exactly. Fun. Exactly. It's going all the way. Oh wow. my God. It's not that big, though. Um, you haven't seen Kevin's thumbs. This yeah. episode's brought to like you by Persian the Persian cucumber on a hand. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but we will talk about that later. Real quick, you might notice we have a fourth chair open. During this episode, it will be a rotating cast of some of your favorite oh. and some of your least favorite members of Kind of Funny. <laughs> We're going to start with one. Who? Which one of that is it? I don't know, but Bear Courtney. It's definitely the least favorite. Definitely. I, I have an important uh, update on the whole Mixer Twitch thing. Oh, Tommy was so. Yeah. Tweeted Tommy from so. his official Twitter account. Oh, no. Just one word, Mixer, and then linked to... Mixer.com slash Tommy was so. So oh there we God. go. Mixer's it's winning everybody. Oh God, it's happening. This is the everybody. windfall that they were looking for. Yeah. yeah God. Yep. God, you gotta love it. Barrett, what's up? I want to talk about Wolfenstein Young Blood. Oh, Wolfenstein Young Blood. Uh. Oh, Let's no. talk about Wolfenstein Youngblood. Uh, so it had come out like right before the game had come out and stuff. Like it was definitely a different game from what we have known oh, okay. of the. Uh, oh, you played a preview build? Is what no, you're no, 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 no. Like, he's saying right before we got our hands on the game, it had come out that this isn't your traditional Wolfenstein. Yeah, oh, this isn't broke. This isn't your mama's Wolfenstein type of game. Mm-hmm. And so I had actually Stopped put off. Old blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I had actually put off uh, playing it for for a little bit because uh, you know I was watching My Hero Academia. Playing uh, Ultimate Alliance three priorities uh, priorities Making and the so, right moves out yeah there. and so I finally played it last night and it was one of those interesting things it definitely starts off with like all right let's get into the story and stuff like that and I, I love uh, the Wolfenstein uh, kind of uh, world that they're building with the the whole reboot uh, that they've had for the last couple of years and the story they set up uh, definitely at the beginning is really cool of seeing uh, B J interact with his uh, daughters that we don't really know super well this I think takes place. Oh, one, or like 1980, 18, I thought. 18 years after Wolfenstein oh. 2. Um, and so 
And then uh, we get that cool little opening, and then we cut immediately to a year later. BJ's missing, and the daughters are looking for him in France. Twin sisters. Uh, yes. And so the first level definitely feels like uh, Wolfenstein 2. From what I remember, it's definitely... Um, um, a little more linear. You're going through, and uh, they're teaching you like new little things, uh, slide like, mechanics. Get them coins. Yeah, uh, slide yeah, mechanics that uh, Andy coin. and uh, Nick did not know that were in the game, but You'll I believe in the were mode. in previous iterations. Yeah, so I don't know yeah, yeah, what the it's up right now. <laughs> YouTube.com/slash kind of funny games. And uh, little things like you get the double jump very early, like from the mm -hmm. beginning of the game and stuff power like that. Jump. And uh, you actually choose which power up you want uh, before you even start the game. There's the cloaking device, and then there's the uh, smash. Ram, or whatever, yeah. yeah, the RAM, uh, which is also interesting because I believe in Wolfenstein 2, you don't get those types of upgrades and, and later into the game. Um, and so first level, it's like, all right, this is like what I know. It's what I'm familiar with. Uh, you see the little like level of each character, which I, was, I saw and I immediately started dreading of like when it actually becomes important. Because when you start off, you're all level zero. It doesn't really matter. Yeah. The game's just teaching you like. Re reteaching you how to play Wolfenstein. Yeah, super basic in the beginning. Yeah, and so the the first mission was really fun. You played uh, solo, by the way. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I did play solo uh, last night. I do for certain aspects of this game later on. I definitely do want to find someone to to squad up with, and uh, we we get out of the main uh, first mission, and we get immediately kind of put into the kind of open worldy type of stuff of Wolfenstein Youngblood. Uh, you're dropped in. I think like on the other side of the map to get to where your base is and already I, I was not a fan of how this new Wolfenstein is going to be played out because I already kind of see where they're going uh, with this uh, with this one of going through areas over and over again enemies respawning uh, stuff like that and it was also really confusing of there was like a specific place where they wanted you to kind of sneak, but I don't think the stealth aspect mm -hmm. of the game that they've added is strong enough for that. Like the one stealth mechanic really is the the cloak thing, yeah. but it's very uh, weak at if the beginning of the game. If you don't upgrade it, yeah. it's useless. And almost. you can't upgrade it. Because you have you to get... crouch yeah. and stay crouched. Yes. So if you upgrade then, it, you can run, which yeah. then it's actually awesome. Yeah. But if you don't do it, it actually... I, I played some, I don't like it at all unless yeah. you upgrade it. Yeah. And so I wasn't, cause you have to get to level 10 to get that first upgrade. Right. And so I got to a part where it was like, oh, there's like the, I forget the names of all the different machines throughout the game. There's so many and I don't know German super well. Gundam. Uh, Gundam. Machine. There's a Gundam dog <laughs> at one point and it's set up to be way higher level. Like it doesn't even show you the level. It shows you like the little the skull. skull. Yeah. yeah. Which is per usual for these types of games. Yes. And, but you have to get past it to get where you need to go and it's the game is trying to point you to do more stealth stuff but the layout of what you're doing and the abilities you have at the time weren't really suited for that again i've only played like two this hours interesting because so. i felt a lot of this i'm gonna let you keep yeah, going yeah and so it there is just like little things uh like that that i've seen already that are very frustrating and is not something i would call a good step forward for the Wolfenstein franchise. Granted, this is like a weird spin-off. Sidestep, side right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, uh, kind of like Old Blood in, in a way where it's not like a main entry of the series. And uh, so hopefully if uh, if and hopefully when they do Wolfenstein 3, because there are some little story details uh, added even at the very beginning of the game that tease of what they're going to do possibly to the follow-up specifically to Wolfenstein 2 that I'm excited for. Um but yeah, like when they announced that Arcane was jumping in to help uh, or develop this one, I was like kind of excited. I love the Dishonored series, mm -hmm. and I thought of like all the interesting ways that they could add to uh, stealth and level design and all of that. And I haven't really seen that yet. And I think the things that they have added from their development style doesn't help Wolfenstein in any way, shape, or form. And I, I just know just adding adding the leveling for, for enemies and areas and whatnot is just, it, it's frustrating. I understand it's their experiment, especially because this is a, a side note for them. But already I'm kind of, I want to give it a fair shake. I want to see what the, the story is at the end because what I've heard is there's barely any story between the middle or between the beginning and the end of the game. So I want to see like 
where these characters end up, like what BJ is up to and, and whatnot, just because I, I really like the story and the lore of the entire uh, Wolfenstein series. Uh, so I don't know. We'll see. Those are my first like not two hours. Yeah, so it's not not really high for me right now, but I'll push through. Do you think that the the changes that you're talking about that you're mm. not really liking? Do you think that they were made to kind of pad it out to be a larger experience, or do you think that these are uh, experiments towards seeing if maybe these mechanics might be expanded on in the future? I think it's definitely experiments for now because you know it's only like a two player, and from what I understand. Um, a lot of it is like repeating like missions and repeating areas and stuff. So I don't think this was a big step for them to be like, okay, this is what we definitely want to do. I think this was definitely a test for them to be like, what works, what doesn't work? Do we want to maybe add this to the main Wolfenstein? We'll see. Hopefully not though. Fran, what's been your experience? With yeah. Wolfenstein? So interestingly, it sounds like, you know, we've played a similar amount, a couple hours. Yeah. Um, I did, uh, number one, what I would bring up is the co-op versus not co-op. Mm. Uh, your twin sisters. When I was going in, that was the first thing I was like, uh, my brother was playing it. I was like, you know, is it, is your it twin like brother? co-op or yeah, my twin brother, right? Half brother actually. But anyway, um, so I was like, is it co-op? Like does it need to be? And he's like, no, 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 no. But he's, he's very casual with a lot of stuff he plays. And I was mm. like, oh, okay, cool. But I went in and like went to select and like, it has you choose your classes right, and yeah. then right away it's like you will be playing with an AI character NPC if you don't play with somebody else. Right now you can keep a match open, you can have people randomly join or whatever. But I'm like, nah, nah, like I'll just play myself because I played Wolfenstein and I'm just gonna, I don't care what the other character does. But I personally very quickly found it is not designed well for the single player experience. Mm. Now within that first two hours, I was like, my ability sucked, the NPC AI is not really doing me much favors. Mm. Like it's not like it was dying all the time, but it's not doing anything to help you. And this is literally designed that if you and I were playing Barrett, right? When you were at that like Thundercat dog that you're talking yeah. about, that you would have been like keeping it busy and I would have gone out back and oh, there's like a, tur a laser turret up here. Right. I'm gonna put eyes on that, but you keep it busy and like your AI character's not gonna do that. Mm. So anyway, to skip ahead, um, I tried it for about an hour or so by myself and I was like, I'm not really digging this. It's just the pace is a little like, if, what if I told you, you know, they took Wolfenstein, they gave it to a fairly talented developer, but they told him you have a limited timeline, just reuse what you can, add in some new mechanics, experiment. It just feels like it's a little thin in that respect. So it's not like it's a bad game, but mm. I'm like, I don't know. I guess I could play this like on and off and maybe it gets better later, but you, you do have to upgrade your abilities before it's reasonably fun at all. In yeah. other words, it's not like it opens up and you feel like you have these cool new sister abilities and it just felt kind of cliche in that sense and average, but whatever. After that, I teamed up with somebody from my chat. Thank you, Jonah, for the help. And uh, Jonah Hill. Jonah Jew. Wow. Oh. Um, <laughs> but anyway, Jew. Jonah, Jonah, I believe he's a best friend as well. So From um, down under. From down under. Like, no, not at all. <laughs> he's from Virginia. Um, anyway, so we hopped in. And right away, actually, it already felt like just much more normal. In other words, interesting. the way that you keep enemies from getting at each other, it felt more balanced. And gotcha. I ran into the same thing when I was playing solo. I was like... I feel like it wants me to sneak around because there's so many enemies to kill them first before yeah. I get into this bees nest situation. And as I found out playing with another player, it felt way more controlled right away. So yeah. I would recommend hop in and try it uh, co-op. What I will say is something funky with the online. I'm playing on PC. So before I teamed up with Jonah, I actually had set matchmaking. I was like, oh yeah, I, was, I don't care. I'll just hop in anywhere and pff, let's tear stuff up. And I don't know how the ability tree works. If you hop in later with people, I assume you just have what you have. But anyway, it just didn't do anything. It didn't work. Nothing happened. I didn't get a match. Then I tried to matchmake with him. This is again on Steam. And we had a few connection issues. It took a good like five, six minutes just to like Whoa. get it to connect. Wow. Like we had a disconnect, then he couldn't see me. Then I tried again. Uh, I don't know if it's a Bethesda net account thing because it's going through Steam. And right. Anyway, so that was a little frustrating. Um, and But eventually we got to play and it was fine. Although we did suffer a disconnect at the end of that. A game crash or a disconnect that like booted us out. I was like, all right, I'm done. I got to go grind on Destiny. So anyway, all that being said. Got to go back to work, guys. Let's talk to you later. <laughs> yeah, basically. I mean, a, a big, big Destiny grind. 
But um, anyway, I, I really liked The Last Wolfenstein. I did only get about halfway through it, but oh, I it really enjoyed the pace of it overall. Yeah. And just like, it's just blazing fast FPS. Like It's really one of my cool favorite style. games this decade. Yeah, and this it's, doesn't have that going no, for it, it at all. And it, the one thing, like the two big things, frustrations disconnects I have with it is the one of the reasons why it's my favorite game it's like I think the the shooting and stuff it, it feels so fun it, it's to me on par with doom of just like fast paced get in people's faces uh, oh yeah action and then also just like the weird character moments and the weird story that they're telling with uh, this crew uh, on the 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 ship that you're on in Wolfenstein 2 and you don't really get any of that like you've got the sisters and they're fun enough together but um, just I don't know there there's a definitely a disconnect with um, with that aspect and then well the fact they don't capitalize enough on the storytelling sucks right right because you figure I think the game opens so strong to set mm. them up uh, exactly. first off them training you know either with BJ or with their mom right right coming back together their sisters dropped in uh, Paris and then when you go into that first world to fight right and there's a thing of like you ready for this yeah right and then they do and they get in there and it goes in the escalation the way it does and then yeah vomit yeah and they're like cheering oh, but man. horrified at the same time as they try to deal with the fact they just killed their first person which is super exciting and horrifying yeah. like they, yeah. it's like moments oh, like that is give awesome. me more of that throughout yeah. the game so it sucks that it, everything it is is a wasteland right yeah. of like because I, yeah I, I like them as protagonists like I, I love BJ as a protagonist especially when he's monologuing all the time in uh in Wolfenstein 2 of his dreading of he he thinks the entirety of the game pretty much that he's going to die and i think the way they set up these uh these sisters was really interesting of like these are the daughters of bj motherfucking blaskowitz and this is the first person that they're killing and this is like them having to deal with that and go through that and maybe there's a bunch of dialogue throughout missions that they say right. to each other because they kind of casually talk to each other and stuff so maybe there's stuff like that but uh, i haven't really seen that yet and then the other main uh, disconnect I have is just the upgrade system in general. From what I remember of Wolfenstein 2, the only things that you really upgrade are your weapons. And I, I think that's why this game has a totally different design because now everything is based around level, like what your level is, yeah. what enemy levels are, and then what ability upgrades you have, whether you're upgrading health yeah, and, and weird like stuff rage. like that. It's a little like Rage. It's much less than like say what Rage offers, but yeah. It's like mind, and you have certain things that would, you know, intelligence or power. Yeah. And you have to, yeah, you have to get your level to upgrade, but you also have to earn ability points just by playing the game, by mm. shooting enemies with certain guns and getting things done. Um, I wanted to ask a couple things really fast. Uh, since you are more into story than I am, I'm like, I do appreciate a story, but I'm never like super like, oh, I can't wait. I never finished the last one. That's why you love Stein. Destiny. Yo, oh, fucking man. Man. Yeah, man, it was from the moon. Let's oh, shoot gotta, shit. We got to shoot the you big need to red come guy. back and play because it has gotten oh, much better. Fucking ghost. It honestly the story's gotten way better. I'm oh, excited. Kate for is it. dead. All oh, right. no. Let's get off that topic for a second. <laughs> so in the very beginning of this, did you find it odd? This isn't a major spoiler or anything. They set up that the very emotional cutscenes in the beginning, right? Mm. Like one of the girls is out hunting Jess and then Soph's in, at home and then when they team up in that first mission, she they're like on looking and she's crying. Remember? She's like emotional. She's getting nauseous sorry yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like, are you okay and she's like yeah it's just you know the first time or whatever mm -hmm. but then literally 10 seconds later the boss comes in and you and do her like, finishing yeah, move, and she saves her and blows the guy's head off like literally like and she gets brain in her mouth and they're laughing they're like <laughs> they're like silly teenagers but it literally jumped and i was like is the whole wall vomiting that, I was like, what just happened? That doesn't bother me as much because of what the other games have done to set up these kind of like weird and crazy, wacky. like wacky characters okay. of the like kind of weird emotional ride that yeah, they're going on. Yeah, it just didn't on. make sense. It's that thing of the adrenaline spike, which is what I liked about it. They've right. been trained since birth, you figure, to be Nazi killers, and yeah. they actually have to do it. And so it's that like, whoa. And that was the one thought I was, I was like, well, I guess like they... Yeah, they're trained to do this, and they got that adrenaline rush. I think I used the same word. It mm -hmm. was it was a little weird. But the other question I had was, oh, it just escaped me. Oh, on the store, have you read much about microtransactions? And have you guys 
caught up with this or did it show up yeah. on games? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I got this totally right because I just caught up on it last night. What I understand is when you first were going into the game, and especially on PS4, I think there was some old text and communication that said you can buy, so you buy gold bars, which you can uh-huh. buy vanity items, like mm. cool suits, and right. but there's these boosters, and by the way, oh, we didn't touch on it, and do you agree that the ammo economy in the game is really rough? Like you need certain types of ammo to take down shields on certain enemies. They show right. you the type. And I was running out constantly, yeah. now granted, Oh no, even when I was playing co-op, did you find the ammo conservation problematic? Yes. Uh, yes. M- more, and like I definitely had that uh, difficulty in Wolfenstein 2, but that that's just because I'm a, tribi- a trigger happy motherfucker. So it's yeah, like, this I felt like was much worse. Yeah. But um, anyway. The, the microtransactions, I, I remember that making like a, a big sink. So, and then like I totally forgot about it yeah. until like. I was going in the menus for something else, and at the very, very bottom of the list is the booster stuff. Exactly. And then so I looked boosters. at it, and I was like, oh. Eh, so here's what's weird. And Greg, maybe you got the clarification or if we have to follow up. But um, at first, it would appear that you could buy them with like the gold bars. You could mm. buy ammo boosters. And I was like, that's a little strange. Yeah. <laughs> that's pay to play. Like, huh. you're, it seems like you're baiting me into this, and there's silver coins all over. However, and if you Google, you know, uh, Wolfenstein Youngblood microtransactions. It's like, you know, Wolfenstein Youngblood's microtransaction mess explained. That's a Polygon article. There's many articles. I'm, I'm right I was going through, and so it would appear that at first that it looked like you could buy it with like just money, gold mm-hmm. bars, but that's not true. You have to pick up the silver coins around the world, and eventually you can buy boosters by playing the game. Do you, do you have an understanding? Of this you, you're nailing it, right? This is Ben Kucher at Polygon, right? Here's the original listing from that morning. Contains gold bars and in-game currency used to acquire new power armor and weapon skill, skins, gear, pep signals, and consumables to help you and your friends battle through Nazi-occupied Paris. But when I looked at the boosters and the in-game menus, I noticed that they could only be purchased with in-game currency, not gold bars. Here's an image to show what I mean. But when you so, browse the menus, it looks like it's part of just you can buy it with gold. So box. the official listing for the premium currency said they could be used to buy boosters, but the PC version of the game contradicted the listing, while the PS4 version of the game not only let you purchase boosters with gold bars, but there were more boosters available to purchase. Here's another screenshot from this. <laughs> so it launched the PlayStation 4 version of Wolfenstein uh, did have an XP booster and a silver coin booster that could be purchased with premium currency as well as in-game currency, oh, and yeah. neither of these two boosters existed in the PC version of the game. I contacted Bethesda to ask about what was going on and was told these differences were meant to have been patched out of the game before launch. After receiving that email over the weekend, we've done a hard boot of each system and restarted the game to make sure any and all patches are in, uh, installed and check to make sure everything bought. The ability to use premium currency to buy boosters was removed. The yeah. updated Steam listing for gold bars has also edited uh, to remove any note about consumables. Yeah. So why so was it, was it just, in there? It, it was looks, a fuck up in the beginning and went away. But it looks reactive, unfortunately, because the narrative is that the community saw it why are you selling boosters and XP and blah, blah, and it looks reactive, like, oh, it's not supposed to be there, but it, huh. it was on one console, not the other. I actually do believe that they were thinking about it, and yeah. they mistakenly left it in yeah. that version. I would imagine you're thinking, it's, Oops. it's like when we used to review, do, do multi-platform reviews at IGN, and you, oh, copy, you copy something over to the PC yes. version, you <laughs> forgot this one thing, you put in the thing that you yeah. thought you fixed, but you didn't fix it in that yeah. version. Yeah, right. you're copying stuff, and it just was old. But that has created a narrative. That was all I heard when I was streaming. It was like, oh man, I don't want to play this, the microtransactions are messed up. And then I dug in, I was like, I don't think you can do anything other than vanity stuff for the yeah. most part. So, yeah, there was another, to be fixed. somebody else, it was Kotaku, did another article that was like the microtransactions in Wolfenstein aren't even worth getting uh, mad about. Yeah, right. my, Wolfenstein Youngblood's microtransactions aren't even worth getting mad about. Right. Because they're not, now that it's fixed and it wasn't intended apparently it's not an issue but the narrative was can't believe they're doing this which would be true if it was still there. Yeah. So if you heard about it I think it's a good point of clarification because that's all I've really heard about the game other than um, that was it. You know I heard about microtransactions. And of course though not to mention who the fuck cares? <laughs> <laughs> what? I, why the fuck would I care if you you bought this in this co-op game and you're leveling, getting more gold than me? Because you're oh, no. cheapening the experience, You Greg. cheated well, yourself. <laughs> so you, that's right. You Jesus. make a good point, which is if that's your prerogative, however, what about the morality of if it's baiting you into buying stuff? That's fair. That's the problem is if it appears, and by the way, the ammo conservation, that it right is, away, hmm. wait, I have no ammo, but I can buy ammo boosters? That would be a very bad scenario. Fair, but right. I, I know fair, what fair. you mean, which is people get upset in PvE games sometimes. It's back to Assassin's Creed Odyssey. 
Right. You can buy a one time XP booster that'll, you know, level you up five times as fast or whatever, or whatever the hell it was. It but as long as it level. doesn't bait you into that. Well, right. I mean, it was slow leveling, and Odyssey was slow leveling with the XP thing, but who mm. the fuck cares? Yeah. yeah. Comes down to it was great. You didn't need it. Anyway, yeah, yeah, Kevin never did it. At never. the end of the day, a Wolfenstein young blood didn't Wolfenstein. mess with any of the microtransactions, but besides that, I thought it. I, I think it's fine so far. Yeah, Are you if, planning on completing it? I do want to complete it. I do want to see where the the story. Because what I imagine, it's a lot of doing the open, quote unquote, open world stuff, going through all these missions, doing the three raids, and then after, because of story reasons, after doing these three raids, the end of the the end of the game will have uh, way more story. Oh, yeah, what stuff. are raids in the game? It's do you even know? Uh, I mean, it's like these like. I don't know. You have to be certain levels to get more to the, intense. Yeah, it, it's basically these three guys. These three characters have basically the secret of where BJ mm -hmm. is. You have to take all of them down. But so the entire game is basically leveling leveling you up to get there. I would have much rather have it be a four or five hour experience where mm -hmm. it's the that beginning part of the game. The three different missions are just like different levels, and at the end we, we uh, do the final mission of finding BJ at the end. Gotcha. But yeah, I'm sticking with it. We'll see where I yeah we're It'd be much better. We'll see where I land when I get to the end. But that's my time. Thank you guys so much for having cool. me. Cool. Thank yeah, you man. very Thanks. much, Barrett. Barrett. Bye, Courtney. Barrett. Now this next segment, Beat I want to let you Alliance. know, is brought to you by our Patreon producers, Tom Bach and James Hastings. Ooh, How I you like that. that. Oh, our boy. Now this is a a first, a first ever oh, for for kind of funny in I general. Can't wait for this. We have Cool Greg joining us on the kind of funny games cool cast Greg. to talk about his first ever preview event. That he did. Where what did you get to see? Man, I got to see Concrete Genie, the beautiful game that's gonna be my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So what is Concrete Genie? So Concrete Genie is I know it's a PS4 exclusive, and you're basically trying to bring your town back to life through more or less street art. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's PS4 and PSVR. Did you yeah. get to do both of those? Yeah, so they're different games, right? So the PSVR, I think there's two versions of it, and it's kind of a little more or less like free play. And you're kind of just um, making your own, like you're in the world rather than in the actual game. You're in your own world and there's this world on the wall that, you know, you can add to and you can uh, change, but you can't jump into. So I want to take a step back. Mm -hmm. What was the experience like of you going to your first preview event? Oh, man, it was dope, man. So <laughs> I, I walked in and instantly um, I was like amazed about how nice it was because I've never been to, to uh, Foster City. So when I when I first so walked PlayStation in, headquarters. Yeah. Um when I first walked in, they, they had like a uh, all the PlayStations um basically treated like trophies. You know, like behind like you can't touch them and everything. It's like through like they had the Vita, had its own little oh, nice little area. Stuff. Goddamn yeah. right they did. I took a picture <laughs> of the PS2 glass. one, so I thought it was nice. But um <laughs> yeah, besides that, uh I saw some best friends also on my way in, which is pretty dope. And then um the, everyone there, all the, the ladies who worked there were very generous and very nice and everything. They had sandwiches and stuff. That was, that was cool. Oh, yeah. But then, <laughs> Dude, the soon, free lunch, man. As soon as I got to the actual game, um, I ran into uh, Dominic and Jeff, who were the, Pixel the art designers. Yeah, the art designer and the creative designer, I guess. And um, I recognized them just through from throughout the years, watching different commercials and different interviews for this game. So that was pretty dope. They recognized me, which was pretty dope as well, you know, because I was like, oh, shit, I didn't know I was even like, you know. Wait, why would they, why'd they recognize you? Uh, just because I'm so vocally supporting on Twitter, I guess. You are the <laughs> number one Concrete Genie <laughs> fan That's in the so world. so awesome. And it's amazing, and it's Concrete awesome. Concrete Genie influencer, this is yeah. awesome. Yeah, and uh, so I was allowed to play, I've already played this game once at E3 2017, 18, one of those. 18, yeah, last year. And um, it was a lot of fun. This seemed like I played the same level and the the first level of the game. So I got to play two levels this time. And when I replayed the the level that I've already played, I, I don't know if it was so much, it was just better and in, in all ways. Like I got through it faster. There was like, it was just, it seemed a lot funner just jumping in because at um, E3, I'd never really even played a PS4 game. Maybe a little bit of Jason, but that's about it. Um, so I was really lost doing it, but this time I felt comfortable. I knew what to expect. I kind of understood how everything was going and, um, man, I love it. It's, it's beautiful. Like the whole thing, it's, it just feels like you're in like this Rudolph kind of world, you know, like, like claymation, kind of like claymation. Yeah. Um, which was cool too. Cause they took me behind the scenes where they actually were creating the game and like how it all started. So I got to meet some of the artists and the people who actually did the first doodles that inspired them to be like, oh, maybe we should do something that's interacting with the walls. And then 
I got to see it all from the ground up and, and, and how they put the faces onto the characters and everything. So it was really cool. So when you were playing the the PS4 like core version of the game, you're yeah. saying like did you did the you like the story of it? Oh man, it was great. Cause so I was gonna be in support of this game no matter what, just because you know I love you know Ryan all walls and stuff like that. I can enjoy that. <laughs> but uh, so I've never you know as you can imagine I've drawn as much uh, like as much flowers as you as you'd expect like zero in my whole life. You know, so <laughs> this whole thing is like. Trees and sunsets and just things Some that I'm artful. not used to. Yeah, so I'm trying to use the rainbows to hit up KFs. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Stuff like that. Um, so it's a lot of fun, but it's just like the town you're in. It just makes you feel like it's um, uh, it's warm and welcoming, but it's also really like dirty almost in a way. Mm -hmm. And it makes you feel like something you'd want to paint. Almost, or like, mm -hmm. you know, like it, it fit, it's fitting. You know, mm -hmm. it's not just random graffiti on the walls type thing. And uh, yeah, the more the more I found out about the characters, like okay, he used to be like a little tiger. It's kind of like hinted at, so that that was pretty cool. And um, yeah, man, it's just about you beefing with people and for me writing on walls. It's pretty cool. How does it compare to the, the beef, to the classic, the seminal classic? Mark Echoes getting up. Oh, I mean, you know, as letters, I love letters, man. You know, so like I can't really compare it to letters. PlayStation Two, too. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Come on, man. The greatest. But uh, <laughs> Game this is definitely different. This is like. You know, that's, I would say, is like the hip hop kind of graffiti or whatever. This is really just like the art side of writing on stuff. And that normally would be a turnoff to you, but you seem pretty high on this. Yeah, because a lot of the, so, so I know it's in San Mateo and I got some friends out there in San Mateo that paint and they paint weird characters, like zombie looking letters and stuff. And when I see these characters, like all the genies, because I don't know if we got to it, but you paint genies on the walls at certain spots. So you're not just painting environments. And when I'm seeing these these genies, I'm like, okay, I see that. Like, that's a character I can get behind and something I would want to design and, you know, make my own. So uh, for making your own, then you did the VR stuff, which is a bit more free play, like free paints, just being able to do whatever you wanted. Yeah. That sounds very up your alley. Yeah. So that was cool, especially because, like, you're painting, at that point, you're painting a world rather than a wall that's a world in it you know so like you can turn around and like some of the characters come over to you and then you can like like light, light fires for them and they'll go over there and just hang out in the fire or whatever you know like <laughs> hang out by the fire you know okay, okay. little things little like that camp. um and uh yeah but something in the actual game that i liked a lot was there's um so basically the city's getting kind of taken over like he has he has all these flashbacks the main character ash he has all these flashbacks when his city was just really beautiful or whatever but or like a little town but now it's getting kind of taken over by this dark, grungy, um, radioactive looking slime kind of stuff. And, you know, throughout the story, you, you get a, a huge paintbrush that's like magical or whatever. And it allows you to do all this stuff. And if you get some super paint, which you get by helping out the genie friends and they kind of give you it if, if they ask for something or if you play with them or whatever. And you can use that to take away it. So it's not really buffing because you're actually painting still, but you can take away the dirty stuff with that and then take over the wall with your art. And there's this really cool part called paint skating. And it's like, you just jump on a, um, the pack that your brush and you're, just, you're, you're skating all over the town now. <laughs> like a roller brush. Yeah. Or Cause or? there's some of the, um, some of the genies are bad. So you're going to have to attack them and get them out, you know, and you get to, while you're on the, on the back of the brush skating around or whatever, you can attack them and stuff. So it's really cool. such a cool game. <laughs> yeah. Every, every aspect of it was just getting better and better, man. Did you like the VR stuff more or the core game? Definitely the core game. Yeah, the core game is something I can uh, jump onto. But the VR stuff, I could see it just being fun um, playing with friends or whatever, just like chilling back and like each of you guys doing something. But that's just more of like you want to really create, you know? Uh, as as the streets when's the game come out? That. It's coming out October 8th, and there's going to be two versions of it. The The regular version is just $29.99, and then the special edition with all the art downloads and stuff like that is going to be $39.99. Are you going to do that? Little whole lot of game shit. Streams. Oh, definitely, definitely. That's that's what I'm worried about too. Is because usually when I'm doing a whole lot of game shit, um, I kind of like their PS2 games a little easier and stuff. This like, I might get stuck at some places and spend like hours. Like, what the hell am I supposed to do? <laughs> People love to watch that. Cause, dude, that's perfect. I was playing this game and then I got to a part and I literally was about to ask the lady who I was working with, like, "Yo, what am I supposed to do here?" But then I press pause and it's like a map and I'm like, "Cause I don't play enough PS4 games and stuff like that." So like, I didn't even think about like, "Oh, there's probably something telling me like little hints and stuff." 
So that was really cool. Because, yeah, that's the one thing. I know the VR well from doing it at that uh, GD, or not after GDC, right? The last uh, the PSVR event. Yeah, which was based on, oh, it, was on the sh- it was on the heels of State, State of, play, of Play. The first State of Play. I haven't played the single player stuff. So is it, you're talking about like getting on your brush and you will skate all over. Mm-hmm. Is it like a giant open environment you can go anywhere and take up tasks? Or is it like pretty much telling you to go from here to there? Like, the, uh, the area small you're playing in? Well, when I, the part that I played with the skate, uh, you were trying to like beat one of the bad genies. Gotcha. Okay. So like, it was just for that. And then when you're in your town, you're already kind of. Like it's free range, you can go wherever you want, but then eventually the roofs are too high for you to jump to. Gotcha. You know? okay, so it just okay. seems just out of reach. Gotcha. Cool. Mm-hmm. I'm any stoked. Other, I can't wait. Any wait. other thoughts? Um, buy it, support it, man. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Greg's a fan, man. Thank you, cool Greg. Thank okay, you very much. Can you can you this episode of the Kind of Funny Games Cast is brought to you by Upstart. As most of us have found out the hard way, getting into debt, it's easy. Getting out hard, especially if your FICO score isn't great. Thankfully, now there's Upstart.com, the revolutionary lending platform that knows you're more than just your credit score. Uh, It offers smarter interest rates to help you pay off high interest credit card debt. Uh, One of my really good friends back in the college days made some bad decisions and this could have really helped him out. Upstart goes beyond the traditional FICO score when assessing your credit worthiness. They actually reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter interest rate. Upstart believes you're more than just your credit score. They believe in you and they understand that there's many facets to you. The best part, once the loan's approved, most people get their funds the very next business day. That's the next day. It's not long at all. Over 200,000 people have used Upstart to pay off credit cards, student loans, fund their wedding, or to make a large purchase. Uh, Free yourself from the burden of high-interest credit card debt by consolidating everything into one monthly payment with Upstart. See why Upstart's ranked number one in their category with over 300 businesses on Trustpilot. And hurry to Upstart.com slash kind of funny to find out how low can you go? How low can your upstart rate be? Uh, checking your rate only takes a few minutes and won't affect your credit. That's UPSTART.com slash kind of funny. Also, shout out to Bespoke Post. With their box of awesome Bespoke Post sends guys only the best stuff every month. Every month, They test everything in the box of awesome themselves, from style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear. Every product gets put through the ringer before it gets inside a monthly box of awesome. It's really cool. You go to the website and you get to choose like what type of box you want. So there's like one that just has like cool, fancy alcohol things or one that has cool, like uh, toiletry uh, stuff or cool knives or, or <laughs> just if you just want like nicer shirts or whatever, you can go there. Really cool stuff. Uh, my brother, cool. Greg just got a, a nice bag that he got a, a little, a, a man bag is what they're calling him. Um, and he's liking that he's been using it. To, a little duffel to, a little, yeah. It's a fancy duffel, a little fancy man duffel. Mancy Duffel. Uh, to get started, you just take a quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right box of awesome for you. Uh, they release new boxes every month across a ton of different categories. It's free to sign up, and you can skip a month or cancel anytime. Each box costs only 45 bucks, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. What a deal. Get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter code KINDA at checkout. That's B-O-X of Awesome. B O X O F A W E S O M E dot com slash kinda for twenty percent off your first box. Boxofawesome dot com slash kinda. <laughs> Send Joey Noel in here, please. Thank what is you. she gonna come Thank talk about? Lego Tower, Fire Emblem oh. Three Houses. Oh. We got a convert. The mini road. I turned it on and yeah. I started it, yeah. and I was like. <laughs> I I did the first battle uh-huh. and I'm like okay I want to play this but it was one of those where I only had like 45 minutes I'm like this isn't it's enough time, enough time. Yeah. and then last night I was like I'll play a little bit while we watch Euphoria and I'm like well no it needs my full attention mm, this or that yeah so then I went back and I had to fight Dormammu you there know you what go. I mean that's what I had to do I had to start level <laughs> in the there you, had a couple there of you go um, but yeah I guess I guess while we're waiting for this let me tell you guys about our ads. Well, that doesn't really work when uh, we record. Well, it's fine time. for the live people. The live people <laughs> are allowed they, to know everything. They totally get it. But yeah. Um, you know I mean? So, friend, Fire Emblem, you have not played yet. No, I really want to play it. It's just a, another one of those. Like, I want to play Mario Maker. I want to play Fire Emblem. Like Greg said, it's the time number one. And if I don't have the time, I sort of question if I want to spend the money on it. In other words, if like, just dude, buy it. I I got bought Wolfenstein because I was like, you know what? This will be an important conversation to have on the show. I knew Barrett was playing it, so that's why I dove in and checked that out. Um, but no, like seriously, I have got so much on my plate with other games. There I've she just is. been monitoring Joey that. Noel. But Fire Emblem's right up my alley. Mm-hmm. But it sounds like Joey's gonna gonna tell us all about it. 
So Joey, this is your first Fire Emblem game ever. Yes. Oh, you played really? for a couple hours now. Yeah, I've made it like three or four battles in, maybe something like that. And what are your thoughts? I really like it. Um, it does kind of. I like the school aspect of it, and it, you do run around and like have to talk to people and do side quests and stuff like that. So it does feel very like schedule wise, like Persona. Um, it's totally a different feel otherwise in that. Um, yeah, and the battle system is totally different. <laughs> um, it reminds me of fantasy football and the fact of like, I don't know, stats for fantasy football. I don't really know how like that <laughs> part works. But if you break it down to just like looking at the individual matchups when you're on the battlefield, it's like relatively easy to figure out like who you should attack with who and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Um, so I really like it. I'm excited. I like the characters. There's a lot of them and there's way too many names to remember. Names what too. house yeah. did you choose? Uh, I chose the Black Eagles. Represent. Uh, because the girl looked super badass. Is she the blonde with the red coat? Yeah. That's what I'm going to go with too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Petra with like the cool hair braid and like the little pink thing under her eye. She's my girl. Yeah. Um, and I, but why is, why are they the black Eagles when all of the rest of them have colors that like, I don't know. Cause it should be red. <laughs> right. Or like crimson or something. Yeah, cool. yeah, that is, crimson. that is a weird, a weird call. Well, keep in mind that like Smallville crows, yeah. they have, they were a black crow on a red banner for the Smallville Crows in Smallville. So it might be playing on that. It's probably Smallville reference. Yeah, it's probably definitely a Smallville, a Smallville, reference. Smallville reference. Yeah, makes a lot of Good sense. Good job, Greg. Um, <laughs> if I'm being honest, I don't really pay attention to the story stuff at all, and I just kind of run through it. It's funny. I, I thought you were going to be more of a story person. I think it's going to get you. It's yeah. one of those things where I feel like you're in that, that like moment where you're, you're just like, oh, there's no way I'll remember these characters. Exactly. Names and stuff. But it starts to become more and more clear. And like That's something that I've always appreciated about the Fire Emblem games is it, it always seems very daunting in the beginning. And mm -hmm. then about a third in, you realize like, oh, I'm super invested in this and I actually yeah. really care. And like the whole, per are you playing with casual mode or yeah. permadeath? Okay. I feel like, and play games how you want to, but I really feel like the game's designed around the permadeath feature because you get so tied to the characters yeah. that you yeah. don't want them to die because you want to mm -hmm. see where their story goes. And if they die, they're just done. And it's like, that's such a fascinating side to it. Yeah, but I guess that, that if you're just that trying to- That seemed like an extreme jump. I was like, for my first Fire Emblem game, I feel like I'm just gonna play it on easy. And to be I, honest, I, I play just, a lot of games on easy because I just wanna I'm, get I'm happy you're enjoying it. I yeah. just wonder how, how much changes that changes the experience of what makes mm. it Fire Emblem, you know? Interesting. Everyone says that it's a very replayable game to go through and play with different houses and like assemble your teams differently. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be against doing that after the first run, but I know that wouldn't be There's plenty as of play time in there, I think. Impactful. <laughs> it might, I yeah. think it would though, because it's like, it's still kind of the, you'd have different characters on your, your team and different yeah. house and all that. So it's like, I still think that you'd have these connections to people. It's like, I will never forget Jill. My Paladin <laughs> from Fire Emblem 9 back in the day. Like, wow. I was so attached to her. And the moment she died, it was so weird where I was doing a mission that probably took me, like, an hour and 20 minutes to, like, get through. And it wow. came down to, like, the last final things. Ooh. And I'm facing off against the boss. And the boss killed Jill. And I was just like, and Jill's yeah. just some random ass side <laughs> character. And I was so, so, invested. so upset and so invested. And um, anytime I'd would have died before like lost people I cared about. I'd reset the game or whatever, mm -hmm. but I was yeah. late enough in the game that I was like, you know what? She'll give her this, life for this. This is canon. This, this is now. what happened. <laughs> and it's like, that made the story like dumb head cannon of mine. Sure. Yeah. So much better head for the game. Cannon. Like it's cool shit, man. Interesting. Yeah. The thing that I need to work on that I didn't really ever have, or it was easier in persona, which is my real only like comparison is leveling characters. Um, cause I feel like I have two characters that are super high leveled and the rest are like pretty baseline. And I feel like I have to be more thoughtful of how I use them to even out my team and stuff like that. Another thing that's, uh, I think Fire Emblem does very well is has a very gradual, uh, well paced sense of progression when it mm -hmm. comes to characters, like the leveling up, uh, what it does differently than a lot of like RPGs is RPGs is like, all right, you start at level one, it's pretty easy to get to level five, and then it just turns into this like grind that what can you get up to a hundred or whatever yeah. it is. Fire Emblem, it's the system where it goes up to level ten and then you get a new class, and then that class goes up and yeah. it's always exciting. Your character dress is different, and like each like uh, depending on what class you are, you only get a certain amount of things that allow people to be master class for stuff. And mm -hmm. it like it allows you to really customize your team. And again, it is about 
not necessarily the story, but it's about the the characters' interactions with each other and your interactions with the characters. Mm -hmm. So you really kind of want to form your team of well, you have your favorites, and yeah. then there's the disposable pawns where you're like, totally. all right, the if you die, yeah. I don't really give a shit about yeah. you, Roberto. And I do like that you can recruit people from other houses as long as you do it smartly and correctly, which I think is fun because there's some other people that I'm like, oh, I like you, I like you, but I wanted to be in the magic house. Yeah, I'm curious. Uh, is this the first? game like this that you played with gameplay mechanics like that with the squares Turn -based and, and like you never played advanced no. wars or any and yeah no. like what do you think of that from like do you like the feeling of those battles or do they feel slow or it outdated feels or slow definitely compared to anything else that i've played mm -hmm. like well i guess not even really because the person i would go through and like match up the elements to make sure that you're combating and using the mm -hmm. all that kind of the right personas um but i do like it because it is very like it's laid out really well and it's not hard to understand. Like mm. I got my ass kicked in the first one. And then once I figured it out, it was like, oh no, I understand how this works. Mm -hmm. um, but I do like the thoughtfulness that you have to put into it of like, you do have to be really strategic. Yeah, I mean, it's- I think it's kind of fun. It's not chess or anything, but it's like it's like that. I mean, yeah. How many squares? Yeah. Right. How many squares? How many what are you, you putting where? You know, who do you have next to each other so that they can- Support system. Yeah. yeah. And but that it, was cool. It, it like it, In other words, I find- I feel like when people watch trailers and stuff, they'd probably see something like, that. oh, I don't know, you know, because it's so different. Yeah. But this game I was curious since you tried it. I think show it's really well. accessible. Exactly. It doesn't look fun. Exactly. And I'm, I'm a fan of, you know, the Fire Emblem, Advance Wars, all that. Um, I like this. But if you'd never played it, I was just curious if it stood out as like, well, it's okay, but it sounds like you like it. It just yeah. takes takes that first few, you know, trials to get used to it. When I first saw it, I was like, oh, I don't think I'm going to play it. That's like not really my kind of game. That's what I'm getting at, yeah. But I, think I it's feel like the more, I'm more and more open to trying new things because I feel like I the more things I play, the more I'm like, oh, that wasn't my thing, but it is now. Yeah. Um. So it's just like getting a better hold on how all of these work. I think it does a really good job of onboarding you and like teaching totally. you how to do it. Um, I, I am not much farther than I was last time I talked about it just because there's been a lot going yeah, on. Yeah, you but, did the preview, right? Um, yeah, but something that I, with where I'm at now, I really like how the game, in all, some of the other Fire Emblem games, uh, it would be much more pared down, like even the GameCube ones, where, or GameCube one, where it's like, you, you do the mission and it's like the actual battle and then after the battle, it's just menus of having like these mm. conversations, I forget what they call them, um, but you can go in and like have different characters talk and it would just be text with the character's picture oh, and like kind of get the their background stories and whatever. And then every time you would do the, the conversations, then your experience would go up or their experience would go up or their relationship, support, relationship yeah. would go up and whatever. But it was very menu based and it was cool and that worked. And I, I thought that I preferred that over the other styles because it's like, cool, I just want to get to the next mission. Mm -hmm. But I think, Three Houses does a good job of having the walking around the school stuff, doing the schedule stuff, and still having those support conversations, but then getting to the actual gameplay. I'm never feeling like I'm waiting to get to the next thing. I'm going to push through something to get to the fun part. I feel like yeah. each thing is balanced well enough that it's like, oh, this is fun, too. Mm -hmm. That's fun, That's too. And it's not just menus. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Which, again, I thought I would have preferred. So Yeah. And I feel like I was used to that because it's very much how Persona is when you're managing your schedules and stuff like that i do like that you get to do the teaching aspect in this which i didn't think i was gonna like mm -hmm. um but it is balancing and prioritizing what order you do all of those things in because they all are important and build no. different parts of it well exciting stuff thank yeah. you very much no joey right. no well joey can you you know what i'm gonna I'm gonna go to Fran here. Yeah, we Fran. skipping forward on something. Fran. We're skipping. The, the one thing I want to bring up real quick is Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. Mm. I was laying laying in bed and sure I was like, are. you know what? I'm done with Kingdom Hearts. I need a Duel Link. That's I need to duel some links, baby. Uh, and I was like, I, I want a game that can uh, just be like a fun mobile game that I go back to every once in a while. Sure. And uh, I I opened up the the app and just clicked on games and Yu-Gi-Oh! was there and I'm like, you know what? I think it's time to do 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 like, duel. You're like, so I did. <laughs> Yu-Gi-Oh! Nigio, you know what I mean? Exactly, yeah, exactly. Said, right? And um, I downloaded this game ah, when it first came out, like two years ago, I think it was. And uh, it was it was a little buggy and very network focused, so uh, it was kind of slow, really framey, and I was just like, "This is not like it felt like a subpar experience." Gotcha. Um, and now two years later, like I was looking at the reviews, and they seemed very positive uh, for it. So I was like, "Oh, you know what? I'm gonna give it another shot." A lot of updates to it, and I'm having a great time with it. Good. It is it is the Yu-Gi-Oh card game, like the original card game, but mobile. I love it. It you can play it with one hand because uh, it's it's vertical design, mm -hmm. 
And it they just really do a good job of transferring the experience of playing the game to a mobile phone. And the I haven't had to do any microtransactions and that stuff. I'm sure that you can, but like you get experience enough, you get the booster packs. It's super fun to open them, see what cards you get, and it's definitely a nostalgia trip for me. Um, where I haven't played the Yu-Gi-Oh card game since high school, um, so it's been a long time. Um, but right back to it, where I'm playing, I'm just like, God, there's just something so dope about this system with the life points and everything, trap cards, all the stuff. I I think you guys are a little old for Yu-Gi-Oh, but it was the superior card game. Past Pokemon. Did you play Yu Gi Oh? No. No. Oh. Okay. I don't know about you. Too yeah. old for games, man. Like, what kind of narrative are we no, 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 selling no. people? No, no, no I'm no, just no, too, old, too totally... old for that to have been something that yeah, was your no, time I, frame. You, you, I mean, when Yu Gi Oh was coming out, I was very aware of it. I just wasn't interested in it personally. Yeah. But no, but I, I, think I, that's I agree. Why. With you. It's like, it was, it's you know, it was coming out like that was the post Pokemon, like. Yeah, but I mean, I feel like I almost had to review something around at once. I oh, just maybe. personally wasn't like, the PS1 I'm just game, messing maybe. with you, Bobby, yeah. but yeah. Um, but I'm having a great time with it, and it's just like, it's a damn fun game. It's a great card game that makes a lot of sense, and I think that the the mobile game uh, does a good job. I think it's free, too, I don't, I don't, unless I paid for it years ago, and now I just still have it. Um, but I'm having a great time with it, so I'm going to keep pushing through that and grinding here awesome. and there. But uh, speaking of mobile games, friend, yes. Sky. Yes, so from the creators of Journey, and Flower. Uh, that game company, and Flower, and, and perfect segue there. So Sky, the, is it Children of Light? We call them Franzitions. Fran oh yeah, it's a transition I heard, because I said, Greg Way, yeah, don't steal my shit. and everybody on Reddit, did, wait a second, didn't you don't steal that steal from my, Craig? You know, it's, it's superfluous. Yeah, he did, by it's the way. It's superfluous <laughs> where it came if from. If you want to bring it up. Craig Harris, everybody, I believe, used to do a Craig way. Well, no, Scott Brown used to do a Craig way for Craig. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh wait, Scott came up with yeah, it. Yeah, Scott did. Oh, but it was for Craig. Just and like everything I did at IGN, I ripped it. off from of Scott Brown. <laughs> anyway, transition. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Journey <laughs> and uh, you asked for it, you got it. Journey and Flower. I feel like Sky is almost. Um, a child of it, for lack of a better way to put it. It's a little bit of the feeling of both games, the floatiness, the beauty of flower, of like gliding around. Now the journey didn't have the sliding, and but you also slide in the game down these like sandy hills, but it's very, it, it feels a little like flower from a vibrant world perspective. But again, it has this character that's like journey. It's really interesting. Um, in a way, you'd almost be like, huh, I would have thought you would have tried something all brand new, but you took these two worlds, and in a way, it feels like they merge the gameplay aspects that they really like. Um, on top of that, though, the really big thing about it that I think is surprising if you don't well, play as many mobile games, um, or I don't play a lot of mobile, so maybe this is happening in more spaces, but it's a social game experience. So, you know, it may start as you start um, walking around these sandy environments and you're trying to gain your wings of light so you can float up in the air and start floating. Mm -hmm. Now, you can only stay up in the air to go so far, um, go so high. Eventually, you learn to fly and uh, you start doing that on your own. You think, well, this is what the game's about, clearly based on past games. But as it turns out, you get to areas and what you have are like candles and like light. And so you need to have light to progress through areas. And so it becomes almost like a, yeah, like a raid experience or a co-op experience where like, wait, I need you guys there to get to this next area because it'll start like raining or there's mm -hmm. like darkness or there's enemies or whatever. And you have to have enough light to progress. And because it's social, there's just people walking around. And so that was the part that I didn't really keep up with going in. I think I was sort of lightly aware of it, but then when I started playing, I'm like, wait, is this an NPC? No, this is like, this it's is like, like journey. Joey's playing right now, apparently, but meaning not just your friends, but anybody in the world. It's really cool in any game like that when you just see people walking around the world. Yeah, as you know, I'm a big Destiny fan, and when it first launched, like that was kind of cool in a shooter that you just see people walking around in the environment doing their own thing. How but does in it this, control? So, I mean, your swipe on the phone in terms of touch controls, and it is a completely horizontal game. It is not a vertical game at all right away. You gotta turn, and they also say put your headphones in because it's very sound, oral experience. Mm -hmm. Oral experience, oral. not oral, oral. Carl, Carl, Carl. Carl. Um, well, I tried to explain that to them on a live show, and, and uh, Andrew Lincoln had no fucking idea what I was really? trying to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how I ended at a Comic Con once. I was like, Wait, is Walking guys, Dead? Yeah, I was like, and how do you guys feel about the me the coral meme? And uh, Chandler Riggs started coral. laughing. And Andrew Lincoln's like, What do you mean? And I'm like, That, and, you know, this is you know way what? more complicated let's, let's than I thought I was going to tell you. <laughs> you get out the whiteboard. All right. Mm -hmm. um, so, anyway, uh, the controls are literally just left stick and jump. 
and you tap to jump, or you can, um, I think it's hold or something. Like eventually you use all your wings to like start flying. And then you're like just using, um, you know, the stick to like hover like Does flower. Feel good, though? Yeah, it feels good, but you're also on a phone. So the reason I hesitate is I'll just say it right now, I sort of, you know, I'm, I'm just don't play phone enough that it feels natural. I know that there are people out there playing freaking Fortnite with like multi tap pinch controls and one hand is the stick and like you definitely can adapt, especially if you play an iPad or whatever. Um, but even on the phone, like it feels it feels smooth and it feels good overall. But I have some trouble, you know, spinning the camera around occasionally and on the phone. Mm -hmm. I really am looking forward to it coming to other platforms because uh, it's not exclusive on iOS forever. It is on iOS only right now, but eventually we don't have the dates. I don't think it'll come to say uh, PlayStation 4 or mm -hmm. Android or whatever. So when that happens, I'm looking forward to like using a controller. I don't think it has controller support on the phone. Is, it coming, it, to, is it coming to other platforms? Yeah, it's not. Okay. I looked into this too because I thought Apple, yeah, I like, thought they, this like, funded was their exclusive or something they funded the thing, game. Yeah. And uh, we, we should double check, but I read into it, and um, no, it's just a period of time, and they don't. Okay. There's no clarity on like how long. Game is good though. Versions for other platforms are in development. It yeah, says. it's free. So again, really? Sky Children of Light is free. I should have prefaced with this. It's free game. So if you're listening right now and you have an Apple iOS device, just download it, put your headphones in, and give it a shot. Um, it's totally free. The way that the microtransactions or money comes in, you can buy a season pass, which you can get access to some more objectives, and um, you also can buy vanity items. So you emote and sort of show off your character, but you can do things. And I, this is where I haven't got too deep, but you can buy candle lights and other things to like basically help other players hmm. so it's actually really cool i mean it's one of those for me that i like to lay down in bed and put the headphones in and it's very serene quiet like flower man it's very hard to describe flower to people yeah. um i think i always told people the same thing i'm like crank the volume put the headphones up play it in like a room without like light blaring in your eyes from the sun it's very experiential and sky has it going for it with this new social element it's cool when you get to new area you're like it's actually kind of tricky because you're trying to get to areas and you need the help. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, you're going to get to areas where it's just too hard Interesting. if people aren't helping you. So definitely worth checking out and I would support a company like that game company out the gate. But it seems Absolutely. like they did a really good job of this. I'm looking forward to just playing more. Um, I think biggest concern is more longevity. So play it now because I wonder if the social side is dying down or if it's how long mm. will it stay around. So um, it's been out a couple weeks or something like that, I think. So it's, I definitely is it out. weird that it came out to no fanfare? Yeah, like I we, thought that the I, marketing was odd. Um, my guess is because that game company, I assume, doesn't have a huge marketing budget. And well, Apple, again, weren't they working with Apple on all this? Yeah, right? but I think Apple, the, the only marketing Apple does that you normally see is they it's put it on Apple. the store. Yeah. And like, that's all I guess they need. I think it, it was in their, you know, top must see games or whatever that they do, but like, there just wasn't a lot of trails. And, you know, Greg, to your point, and this is why I've brought it up on the show, it's just as the traditional press, I don't think we do a good job of covering sure, it. You, sure, sure. Like, per the example, guys, it's free. You know, just play it. Just play it, you know. And, like, to us, it's like, well, I got a lot of other games, and I don't know, it's a phone game. I mean, do you feel any totally. of that? No, that's, I mean, you that's do. absolutely true. Oh, yeah, 100%, yeah. Yeah, so because it's that you have this, like, I'm not really a phone game guy, and I'm really not. Um, maybe a card game. I actually played Fire Emblem on the phone. That was a really good match for me, but I hardly play anything else on there, and this one is... It actually is really nice on the phone, but I, again, I gotta be like lying in bed. I've tried to play it on like the lying train. You need a connection, so that's mm. another thing. Ugh. Yeah, you can't lose your connection. As far as I've seen, it just like nothing happens because it's it's social, um, and and also because of the sound, it's like you want it to be like a quiet, serene experience. At least I did. So, but give it a shot. It's free. Um, really beautiful game. That game company is just honestly really consistent with what they do. If you like their games, I'm confident you're really gonna like this. And curious to hear what people think about it. I'm curious to hear what you guys have to say about Division 2. Oh, DLC. Greggy. Hey, buddy. How you doing? I sorry, saw everybody. I'm sorry that I, you lost me for a second. I had to page for the Switch. I'm having a moment here <laughs> What's where going the on, race Greg? is on, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. I have gotten my advanced code for DC Universe Online on the Nintendo <laughs> Switch. Oh, okay. And I need to make sure I secure the username Taylor Swift because I'll be damned okay. if Imran Khan from Game Informer is going to go over there. And get, well, no, I don't think the codes are live. They yet, watch and they're you looking live? into this. Now. Okay. You know how Imran is. He's always over there doing it. Imran Khan. You nah, you, well, you're a little behind slack. Do you uh, want me to buy you some time with this? No, because it, it's I'm just getting an error. I've restarted okay. it. It's just I don't think the codes are live yet. I think they might have yes. they might have left out a key information. So you're rocking some sweet new America pants. 
I am, yeah, yeah. of course. Yeah, so uh, episode one, Outskirts of DC, has dropped along with it. Yeah, the heat oh wave. Uh, uh, thanks. It was fun to talk to you about this. You know what I mean? Later, Always Tim. Always fun to tell you about your, your games. Yeah. Tell me where I'm at, your weird little mobile Welcome to the phone. very first episode of The Division Show. Here. The Division Cast. I'm the your Division host, Greg, Cast. alongside my partner in crime, Fran Mirabel. Yeah, so uh, I got I already have the heat wave set completed. It turned out when I got my 100th platinum, you might have remembered it here. It was, it was Division 2. Thank you for having me. And my me. Division uh, care kit, the the package I got, the, the drop yeah. from uh, Ubisoft, turned out had a had a code in it that I redeemed for a oh. bunch of cash keys. So I was able to do all that's of the clothing set for the oh, that's for awesome. heat wave. That's very nice. So, yeah, now I'm wearing uh, American Cheer. flag pants. Uh, I'm wearing uh, I, I I was in a Hawaiian shirt for a while, but I took it off. Now I'm, I'm so I'm in American flag yeah, pants. It's all summer themed, right? My new like sunglasses, Miami Vice. Yeah, and new sunglasses with the shinies on the front. Uh, American flag pants, and then I'm rocking that old first responder sweatshirt for that was like one of the first nice. things we got. But I liked how that looked. Kind of like you know, it's like a thing where we've been at the beach all day and we were having a great time. Then we went back to the house and it's now night. Right, it's, night, it's cool. dusk. Yeah, exactly. It's your sweatshirt, but you're still in your swim trunks, ready for it. Gotcha. And I'm wearing new red sh- sneaks too. Um, yeah. Anyways, so though, good. the the next big big update uh, for the division came uh, obviously episode one of their free content that they're putting out throughout the year yeah. and with it what it came with the expedition mode right where you yep. go off to this new college new do a bunch expedition. of stuff uh, a mission over in the zoo and then a mission over at basically their camp, camp David yes so I've done all of them I still have to complete the last part of the expedition thing because I started it thinking mm-hmm. this will be fun and it was like night one I was exhausted yeah and I was like, it takes oh, a while this goes on a while and a it's not while. hard it was I a- think I did it it's one of those like, okay, this, this is where you're running going. around the research yeah, library. Yeah, but it's like, where, where do you want to go? Keep coming back into this thing. Yeah. Expedition was different. I mean, it's funny because I played it. I'm still grasping, like, did I do this right? So you're you're more in an open, big uh, campus science, library, yeah, yeah, science yeah, yeah, lab, yeah, yeah, yeah. whatever. And you're going from room to room, and you have to unlock each room by... Uh, killing the enemies, but yeah. you also have to like, yeah, you'll follow some wires, and we've and done some of this stuff. It seems like it's a daily stuff. mission too, where you can come back and get a different drop in the secret room every day. Yes, and it expands, and there's stuff to find. It anyway, it was yeah. like a little different. It's just like it's not drastically different. No, I not at all. No, though. it's just new environments, which is cool, yeah. right? We're yes. not running the same missions all exactly. the time. I'm not in the Jefferson Memorial again. Yeah, so I'm that, not in the that's museum that's again. what I wanted to ask. What did you think of? So there's two new missions. I mean, famously, if you haven't been keeping up with the vision, um, they had like the space museum, the uh, um, what are the the really cool one with like the Vietnam exhibit and that's, oh, that's the a, American, the American history, history or whatever. Museum. American History Museum and the, awesome. the Air and Space Museum are such awesome. cool design. And so yeah. when I was coming in, I was like, I don't know DLC. Yeah, so yeah, what yeah. did you think? How does it match up with the original missions? I think that these are big and expansive. They're I like big. I like, I like that the camp. It's not Camp David. But I'm gonna keep calling Camp David. Uh, I like that Camp David. Camp John or something. Camp David is like, hey, here's what the division would be like if it was in the woods. Because you're like running through trees and using cover yeah, and stuff, it like and it's a, like really cool. I was not disappointed, but I wanted more out of the zoo. Because like when it was like, oh, we're gonna have a mission in the zoo, I was like, cool. I really hope we get to use the animals as like they're attacking things. Or, you know, what I mean, like they're more of a part of this, right? Hmm. Like there'd be like a threat of uh, you see crocodiles. I mean, there was at one point. briefly the crocodiles, but yeah, you, you don't see really them, but get they're, into they're gone. It. Like, you don't you know get I mean? into it. With That's the thing. Yeah. You see the monkey on the table, and then he's gone. Like even if it was just like you wanted to kill that monkey. No, I don't want to kill the monkey. I'm just saying <laughs> it'd be cool if like even if it was just a can thing of them grabbing like the ba- uh, one bad guy and or pulling you them like down. throw a monkey at one of them and give me the monkey launcher. I want the monkey launcher. Yeah, exactly. All right, I, I crafted I'm like, but no, I just wanted more <laughs> interaction with the environment on that way. In the same way, like stupid little things of like in the Air and History Museum, how, how the space shuttle is falls right, or it yes. has fallen or whatever. It crashes or through no, the roof the or first whatever. Time you yeah, play, yeah, it, yeah, it, it yeah. crashes yeah. through. The roof. I know what you mean. Like, there's the aquarium area, which is beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't it be cool? Shoot if, the glass out in the water. Of course, it does out. the thing yeah, yeah. that you expect. Um, you can't really swim in division that I'm aware of. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. But number one, I was like, wow, is really big missions. I was honestly surprised. There first time time through I was like this is a this is taking me a while I just yeah. did random matchmaking but still um, it took a while to get through them I mean I feel like it was a good like 30 minutes a piece yeah, totally totally like, really yeah. meaty yeah, and I media. thought they wouldn't be that much. Um, lots to explore, lots to go off. I put up one screenshot on Twitter that I liked it, that uh, Camp David, like obviously main pass over here and then there's a little branching. You go up there and there's a picnic table with a knife in it and it, it, somebody carved no fate into the table, like Terminator 2. Really? Like, hell yeah, that's that'd cool. be, wait, that is in there? Yeah. Really? Uh, I didn't see that at all. That's yeah. Well, thanks for following me on Twitter. We have no fate, but what is it? We we make no, no fate. Yeah. No, no fate, fate, but what, what we, we make. make. Dyson, no she's gonna kill yeah, Dyson. Exactly. <laughs> thanks for a long. 
Um, anyway, I thought the missions were a solid update. Yeah. Uh, expedition mode, verdict's still out. I need to play yeah. more, but like, I'm happy to have it. Um, perhaps one of the biggest improvements, which I don't think we have tried, as you can now match make right into right. For, well for easy mode raid, the friendly raid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you won't get the same level of rewards, but you can play the raid and you can match make. And I'm curious just how that goes. I still got to do it. I mean, we should just get out there and try to beat the raid, man. Yeah, but I, here's my whole problem with it: is that all this is great. I'm glad I did it, but like I'm not left. I did them both, got pop both trophies, and then I was like, cool, shut it and walked away. And not even the trophiness of me, but like. Why is the gear score not updated? Why did they not raise that threshold? Like, mm -hmm. I just, what am I chasing in the division right now? If I keep playing night after night, moment after moment, like gear sets, a little bit better damage on my weapon when I know that eventually they're going to up the gear score and I'm going to come in and get better, way better drops. Yeah, it's funny. I'm trying to remember in the patch notes, they didn't, I didn't, yeah, they didn't update the, the gear score. No, the gear score is not um, updated. They did update, like, your skills now are much stronger, like yeah. 25, 30% stronger in some cases. So it's, there's really more interesting builds happening. But I didn't get to, like, go deep dive because, yeah, I, I feel played like the missions. and That's the branch of, yeah. like, the gamer. It's hardcore. It's a hardcore gamer's game. Yeah. And that's the thing is I, I am a hardcore gamer in many ways. I am not in. I don't care about my skill power or my damage thing. I'm there to get the next P. I'm on the gear treadmill for this. Yeah. And, I, and since there's just nothing to grind yeah, for. Yeah, what are you chasing? I don't want to come back for the minuscule things or build out the build mm -hmm. or do this thing. I, I, I want to get better equipment. And if that was dropping, I feel like I'd be back on every night playing. But since yep. it's not, it's like, well, I'll come back when you do. And that's where I am with the raid, too. Yeah, there's like, no right, cool, Here's friendly baby mode raid. Not, not even baby baby. Yeah, it's but not it's baby. Like, here's trying, easier so mode raid. And it's like, cool. I don't want that. I want the better gear to make the ra regular raid easier. So like when that gear score drops, I'll come back and I'll do the, ra the raid mm -hmm. the regular way. Gotcha. Yeah, um, I think it's a good way to put it is that there's they've given you more to do. It's a solid update in that respect. Some really big missions, expedition mode, there's more yeah. to do. Uh, it's a solid, you know, um, more to see expansion, right? Uh, there's some new exotics, not like a crazy amount. It's like, I forget how many exactly. I should, I should have taken notes on that. But there's a handful of them to get. Um, but you're definitely, as much we've played, I mean, we've played 100, 150, 200 hours. I don't know. It's, it's a lot. Like, unless you're really into the division at this point. Um, yeah, like, I don't, I don't feel like a chase. I think I agree with that. Even if the gear score was higher, um, I mostly just want the new exotics and I, I honestly want a better build. I mean, I am more on that side yeah. where I'm like, I have a really high skill power build and I started messing with it and it was actually, um, you definitely can do some new stuff. So I think it's fun on that front. Like I was using the incinerator capsules, um, and they were already pretty powerful, but like I have a build where like I have quite a few of them and I was like tearing stuff up with that now. And I felt yeah. like, oh, this is cool because I built it to do this and it just wasn't that powerful before. So they've adjusted some stuff that might be worth going back to for that. But from a, oh, explore this whole new corner of DC and But isn't that, new like, again, I'm not, that's not even what I want, like yeah. our need. I just need the reason to keep coming but back. But if the, they just raise the power and it's yeah. the same content, then I'd be that back would be on the chase you. thing. Yeah, because I'd be on, I want to be on the chase like we were. You to want get to make sure you're max level. I, and I want to be able to go into the raid and just kick fucking ass. You know what I mean? Like, right now, it's all about like precision timing. Uh, okay. I'm looking at this thing here. Yeah, now. I don't know if you had the patch notes. Yeah, yet. yeah. Uh, new weapons and exotics. This is from Forbes. We're getting the Diamondback exotic yep. rifle and the Black Tusk it's got glove. Like a snake around it. Oh, yeah. yeah, the Black Tusk glove. As well as some new normal weapons the Carbine 8 and the Stoner LMG. Yeah, those were, I think, were just regular weapons added. So, yeah, there's two new exotics, I think, in there. But anyway, th there's stuff to chase. If you're a Division fan, you probably already know this, but um, it wasn't Cool like content, but I mean, like, it just, it strikes me of this is why with the Division 1, when I wanted a Platinum, I took so much time off and then dropped back in, right? Because, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. look at all this new shit to do at once, whereas this is, like, the drip feed of it, but it's not enough to make me turn it on every week now or turn, you know, come back every day no. for daily challenges. Yeah, and, like, I know that I'm committed. Great game, and again, like, I, what I'm, I'm, I've put more than 100 yeah, hours into it. Like, I mean, I've got my money's worth out of it. Yeah, yeah, oh, easily. So it's it's worth it on that front. But, yeah, I mean, it's an interesting contrast because it's, I often mention I play a lot of Destiny. Uh, Destiny had struggled to get to where it is today and have enough to do. And, like, somehow they've there's so much content in the game. A lot of it's worth getting. PvP mode is pretty strong overall, even though it needs a lot of improvements. And, like, I do find myself going back to Destiny. It's just more enjoyable there's more to do um it's a very different type of game because it's a first person shooter with those other elements but in other words division needs some learnings from that still but i'm still very up on division i like division a lot but yeah like i didn't feel like man you've got to go back and play this this update but um it's worth it if you have it and you got the season pass definitely check it out well there you go 
Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the kind of funny games cast for this beautiful week. First day of August, Greg. Heck I yeah, know, man. This, first, this year. And I'll August. tell you, I, I'm the, that kind of guy. I'm sorry. But like August 1st, great. Get the fuck out of my way. It's Let's Halloween get. Time. No, no I'm, okay. I was doing video game stuff. Let's get to last week, August. Get me control. Let's get to September 13th. Give me Borderlands. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because that was the thing. If you've been playing Wolfenstein over the weekend, I was like, yeah, I'd rather be putting this division. I oh, mean, I'd rather be grinding in Borderlands right now. Because oh, again, yeah. there's another level. There's another thing. I'm going to unlock this. Oh, I'm going to so get many this better cool gun. guns. And yeah. yeah. I'm so happy that, uh, did we mention the Destiny uh, delay on the show? No, we mentioned it in the pre-show, but Destiny's delayed by two weeks. That's October 1st now. That's huge. So when Greg mentioned Borderlands, I'm like so relieved. Yeah. And you should be too if you're going to play both games because you now have a few weeks to grind through Borderlands before Destiny is going to hit. Uh, the raid is going to hit on a Saturday. So um, Saturday. I don't know if Andrew is back next Saturday. week. We can maybe talk about it more, but I'm very excited. I wish Death Stranding was sooner. I'm ready. Nah, I can wait. Dude. I've, been th- I've been thinking about it. Man. You're going to get into Death Stranding? The Stranding? Yeah. I really hope. Okay. I mean, I, I hope I okay. hope that it's... That's I, the big one on your mind? If the gameplay is as good as MGS5 and there's a semi-decent story, I'm in. Okay. But will it be? I don't know. Like, what are, what are you thinking? I think it will be. I think it's going to be a super fucking weird game. And I, don't, yeah. I think it's going to be a weird one where you're like, I don't know. I think you're going to... And I'm, what, I'm going off of a trailer where Norman Reedus yeah. moves a ladder. Yeah. I know. Like, that, that doesn't <laughs> scream Tim game to me. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I like Kojima's weird shit, though. See, well, are you excited about Control? No. See, I think Control I'm sounds like a control, game actually. you'd be more into than Death Stranding. But see, the, the, see, I don't the see thing there's control. Yeah, Control, like, like I said last time, is like it kind of optimizing just, your it, loadout it for room not, based. Like it, it looks like it's not fun to control. Whereas like Metal Gear <laughs> Solid Five is so fun to control. It's not right? the review they wanted to hear. Control yeah. is not fun to control. It looks <laughs> like. It looks like. Looks like. Yeah. Looks yeah. Like, yeah the Tim Gettys glass um, first look. Yeah. I was trying to get some. I don't know. I thought. They're, they've done cool stuff with their controls over time, but it's weird to look at. So I'm excited about control. What, wait, what are you excited about? Death, Death Stranding? Stranding? That's yeah. the, Luigi's Mansion. Yeah, oh, yeah. Of, like, 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 in terms of big AAA prestige titles like, yeah. that I want to like play through, Death Stranding is definitely Modern the Warfare? highest on the list. That and uh, Fallen oh. Order. Yeah, I was going to say Jedi Fallen Order. Yeah. Oh, Fallen Order. Sky, no uh, yeah, Outer Worlds yeah, for you. Yeah. Okay. You're not no, that type of game. No. Okay. I'm, I'm excited. Actually, about it. Death Stranding right is the one where it's like I'm I'm hoping it's fantastic, but it definitely could not be. And we'll have to see. I just I'm ready for it now. Like November okay. seems so far away. When you do play it, where mm-hmm. can people go to get your review? YouTube.com slash. Right here, the kind of funny games cast. We'll see you next week. All that stuff. Love you. Bye. Post show time, bitches.